Greetings. My name is Joshua Claiborne, and I'm here, happy to be here today with uh, Michael Burlingham, the president of the Abraham Lincoln Association, among many other hats that he wears within the Abraham Lincoln historical community. We're here today to talk about an exciting new project that uh, the Abraham Lincoln Association is spearheading uh, with the Lincoln Cottage, uh, the home where his family lived before it was expanded into what we now call the Lincoln Home. Uh, the ALA launched a $400,000 fund drive to acquire the land and uh, design, construct, landscape, and furnish an accurate replica of the original one and a half story, six room Lincoln family dwelling. Uh, Michael, what prompted your interest and the ALA's interest in this and, and the historic significance of the project? Well, it's, a, it's something that's been on my mind for a long time. Uh, I can remember when I first visited the, the Lincoln sites in Kentucky, this was many years ago, and on the Knob Creek farm, the second farm that Lincoln knew, uh, at the time it wasn't part of the National Park Service, and there was a commercial uh, cabin, uh, replica of a cabin, fully furnished uh, on the site. And so I went to that and thought, well, this is not authentic to be sure, but it looks pretty much like what the drawings of the time and uh, what we know from archeologists are more or less the size of a cabin. And um, oh, I might as well look inside. And I, as soon as I stepped inside, I said, holy mackerel, <laughs> because it had a spinning wheel and tables and chairs and, and for other furniture. And I thought, so many people lived in this tiny space? Good Lord, what about privacy? What about just family tensions? Uh, yikes. Um, and so I drove home to me how important it was to be able to enter a space, not just to read about it or, or to see pictures of it or, or even have a scale model, but actually be inside that, that, that space. And then not too long thereafter, I was visiting Vienna and went to the site of Franz Schubert's uh, birthplace and, and where he spent his childhood and adolescence. Um, and uh, there were a series of apartment, uh, apartments within this block dating back to his time. And so I said to the guide, because uh, each of one of these rooms had pianos and scores and memorabilia and the likes. And so I said, to the, does the Schubert family have all these apartments? They said, oh no, just one. I said, just one? And he says, yeah, right, and Schubert was born in this, born in this little, little cubby hole of an apartment, yikes. And so that gave me a real uh, feeling for what it was like to, to be alive uh, I'm a person of modest means in, in early 19th century Vienna and said, no wonder there was a revolution in 1848. <laughs> um, and so, uh, and I felt the same way about going into the Lincoln home uh, because as a Lincoln scholar, I, I, of course I knew that uh, the home that we now see, this 12 room house is in fact a lot bigger than the home that they moved into, the Lincolns moved into in 1844. Mm -hmm. And so for 12 years, they lived in a relatively modest one-story, one-and-a-half-story cottage with six rooms. And then in 1856, when Ms. Mrs. Lincoln financed the expansion of the house to, to add a second floor and turn it into a 12-room house, I thought, well, this really is a rather misleading idea of what the domestic environment of the Lincolns was for most of the time that they lived in Nathan and Jackson. About 12 years, they were in a small cottage, and in five years, they were in this big house. And uh, I've, I've spoken to uh, a friend who served as a park ranger uh, many years ago and taking people through the home. And he told me that the many people, over half of the people that he would lead through the home, expressed surprise that it was so big that they had been led, led to believe that Lincoln was a modest country lawyer with a modest income and that this looked like an awfully spacious home for somebody of modest means. Uh, and he would have to explain to them, well, this is the house uh, that they lived in from 56 to 61, and not the house they lived in from 44 uh, to 56. Um, and, uh, and then he thought that, that it would be nice if they had a, a, a replica of the home as it existed before the second floor was added to give them some sense of uh, uh, how different it was from uh, the home that the Lincolns lived in for such a long time. Uh, and so I'd, I'd had that idea uh, at the back of my mind for some time and would mention it to people and, and they would think, oh, well, okay, it sounds good. And, and my, my hope was that it could be built right next to the Lincoln home because there's, a, there's a, an empty lot there right now. Uh -huh. And to be sure, if you put a replica on it, it wouldn't be uh, just what Lincoln saw uh, when he lived in that neighborhood. But on the other hand, an empty lot is not what he would have seen either, right, uh, right. like in his day. So I thought, what would be ideal? So I thought, well, now that I'm president of the ALA, maybe I can 
forward this idea. Uh, and so, so I, I uh, met with Tim Good, uh, the superintendent of the Lincoln Home uh, National Historic Site, and, and said, uh, do you think it would be possible to build a replica of the home as it existed before it was expanded into a two-story two house? And he said, no, 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 they couldn't use that site. Uh, just the, the rules of the Park Service and the like um, would, would, not, uh, would not admit that, but that it's a good idea. Um, and uh, if you could build it nearby um, so that people could visit the home and then uh, even if it's not in the uh, Lincoln Home uh, park, it could be very close by, and they could then move from the home to the cottage. That, uh, wow. So, and, and we, um, uh, the people who are involved in this project refer to the uh, home that it existed between 1844 and 1856 as a cottage, and then we call it the, the later house that was expanded into two, flo uh, uh, two floors as the home. So, when I talk about the cottage versus the home, I hope that that's understood. Right. Um, and anyhow, so, uh, so I mentioned it uh, to, as I say, to uh, superintendent of the Park Service, Tim Good. And then, then I mentioned it to, to my good friend, Dick Hart, who's the past president of the Abraham Lincoln Association, who's been very active in, in historic preservation in Springfield. Um, and uh, so he thought it was a great idea. Uh, and then uh, he suggested that we meet with, with the architect uh, uh, and the archaeologist uh, who might be involved. And so the archaeologist of the Lincoln home, Floyd Mansberger, who uh, has worked with the home for a long time to try to establish just what it was like in the Lincoln stay. Um, and he thought it was a good idea. And so we established a, a, an informal committee um, to discuss the prospects of actually getting this done. Uh, and so for the past, oh, this was back in March, actually. This is just before the pandemic. <laughs> um, and uh, so we've been meeting by Zoom for weekly for some time since then um, to discuss the ways of going about it. And so uh, a, a lot is available just south of the park so that, uh, uh, so that visitors of the park, uh, uh, which as you know, it consists of two long blocks, both sides of the street, so four blocks really. Uh, and so if you walk down from the home to the, to the south end of the current park, and you pass by houses that, uh, that are identified and the people who live there. And, the, and, and you'll, if you're familiar with Lincoln, you know some of these names and they're, they're good interpretive signs. Um, and so you just have to go maybe a minute or two beyond that to get to this lot upon which the uh, replica we plan to build. Uh, and so we've acquired a, uh, an option uh, on, the, on the lot uh, so that it can't be sold and that we have the option to buy it. Um, and uh, we're hopeful that, that we can then build a replica on that. And that's why we're trying to raise uh, $400,000. And we think it will uh, dramatically enhance the experience of visitors to the park and give them a better idea of what Lincoln's life was like, what his domestic environment was like in a much smaller house than the one that tourists now uh, go through. Well, this is excellent. I mean, you know, Springfield really is the mecca for anybody who wants to learn about Abraham Lincoln, and this should only improve it. And I really want to delve here in a minute into how folks can get involved and help and experience. But just to touch real briefly on the history of it, you, you talked about, uh, we think of Lincoln as a very uh, modest individual. And so this will help put that into better context of, you know, he started off in a relatively, and in, in that in that sort of environment. But, but could you also talk about, uh, uh, Mary and, uh, you know, how it affected Mrs. Lincoln, who had to adjust to life in such a small domicile and how that was different from potentially her Kentucky home and, and how she grew up with her, with her family. Yes, yes. Mrs. Lincoln was uh, uh, a child in, in Lexington, Kentucky, and grew up in houses that were uh, quite uh, spacious. Um, and you can visit the, the uh, home that she spent part of her uh, early life in, uh, in, in Lexington today. And it's, it's much grander and bigger and, and better furnished and all that uh, than the current home. Uh, and particularly compared to the cottage that she lived in from 1844 to 1856. Um, and, and, and of course they got married in 1842 and then they lived in the Globe Tavern, which was one room um, in a tavern, uh, which was pretty uh, hard for her to adjust to surely. And particularly since she was pregnant and delivered her first child in, in right. that Globe Tavern. Um, 
Uh, and then, uh, because the baby was uh, uh, do, do, doing what babies do was crying, right. <laughs> they had to move out. And so they rented temporarily a little nearby cottage, a little three room cottage um, on South 4th Street. Um, and then they bought the house that we now know as the home, but then the uh, one and a half story house with six rooms rather than the two story house with 12 rooms that we now see. Mm -hmm. So it was, I think it was very difficult for her to adjust to life in such modest uh, quarters uh, as the Globe Tavern, then the, the South 4th Street cottage, and then the cottage that she lived in. So from 1842, when she got married, until 1856, is a pretty long time, to live in quarters that were far less commodious than the one she had grown up living in and was used to. And so uh, when she, she decided, uh, to, and she used money that she had uh, uh, gotten by selling land that her father had uh, given her, uh, when she decided to expand the house, it was, it was clearly um, uh, a way for her to feel more comfortable in the domestic environment that she, she was inhabiting. So uh, it, was, it was a big step forward, not only for him, it was a kind of symbol that, that he was a, a rising successful political figure and lawyer. And so this expansion of the house is a kind of metaphor for the success that he was enjoying in his careers as a politician and as an attorney. Um, but also as, a, as a, uh, a place that was more suitable for someone who had grown up in the kind of world that um, Mary Todd had grown up in. Right. Well, I, I love that history, and, and I really commend you uh, for the placement of this cottage. It really could have been located anywhere, but obviously it makes the most sense where it is, as close as it is to, to the other home. And so uh, I mean, that, that's just excellent work by you and everybody else involved with the Abraham Lincoln Association. Could you talk about how... Uh, uh, once this is acquired and built, uh, how it will be managed and staffed, uh, who would oversee, the, oversee the, the cottage? Yes, yes, by all means. Um, uh, well, one of the challenges is, is the first to, to acquire the land and then to build a replica on it. But then the ongoing challenge is to supervise it and maintain it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the $400,000 that we're trying to raise, which we uh, be sufficient to actually acquire the land and to create the replica would not be adequate to supervise it and maintain it. Uh, and so we're, we have reason to hope uh, and expect that the Park Service would accept this as a gift. Our, our plan is to, to raise the 400000 uh -huh. to uh, keep the option on, on to buy the land available, um, to submit the plan to the Park Service to, and to say, this is what we would like to give to you if you will extend the boundaries of the park to include this, this stretch right. of land just, just, so, just south of the border that, of the National Park Historic Site uh, today. Um, uh, and then, and then, you, then they would then maintain it and uh, uh, supervise it. Now, it wouldn't have to be staffed. That is, you wouldn't have to have interpreters leading you through the house uh, as you do for the home, for example. Um, and there are already two buildings within the park, uh, the Arnold House and the Dean House, that are, that are open to the public, that are not staffed. Mm -hmm. um, and the same would be true for the cottage um, were it to be added to the park. So uh, we're, we're uh, hopeful that the Park Service would take it over um, and that they would then maintain it and supervise it, which wouldn't require uh, an, ex an extensive amount of new hiring or, or expenditure. Um, uh, so we're, we're, we have every reason to believe that, uh, that there's a very strong chance that the Park Service would take it over. And I think that's important for those that want to contribute and give to know because uh, you, your funds are going to be used judiciously and wisely. Um, uh, you know, sometimes these projects, you can, unfortunately, you can give to them, and you don't know sort of how it will be managed or handled, but I think you really thought through uh, not just constructing it, but, but ensuring that it's maintained and cared for in the future, particularly to the extent of trying and looking to partner with the National Park Service. And that'll be, I think, critical to its sustainability long term. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I, certainly, uh, you know, I don't know if you want to talk more about the history of the cottage, but we obviously want to make sure anybody who's uh, watching or listening knows how they can uh, contribute and get involved. Um, I'll, I'll note that the Abraham Lincoln Association uh, website has an opportunity to give all via PayPal and then also other opportunities to learn about it. And the website for that is abrahamlincolnassociation.org. But, but Michael, I don't know if there's other opportunities or avenues that you feel like folks can get involved or contribute or help. 
for this project? Well, I think the website would be the best mechanism because it, uh, you could click on the, the uh, um, site for uh, the Lincoln Cottage and then, and then contribute um, easily through, through PayPal. So uh, that, that's the mechanism that I would think would be most, most suitable. Uh, that, that's great. And I, uh, obviously, uh, we encourage people to become members of the ALA as well. Um, uh, certainly, it's, a, it's sort of an altruistic motivation for giving, but, but what other types of uh, benefits and whatnot do, do folks give for uh, contributing to the cottage and being involved with the ALA? Well, there, there are various levels of, of gifting. Um, and uh, to uh, uh, some donors uh, at, uh, at one level, a copy of, of Abraham Lincoln and the Civil War, um, a book I wrote a while back, uh, and a, a more, at a more generous level, there are uh, copies of, of another book, a beautiful um, photographic book for which I provided the text uh, about trial, uh, sites that Lincoln saw, that is uh, the world that Lincoln knew, and then another one of similar uh, beauty and, and uh, impressiveness about Lincoln at Gettysburg. Uh, and then for the for the bigger donors, uh, a copy of uh, my two volume biography of Lincoln, um, Abraham Lincoln: A Life, two thousand pages, and and uh, everything you want to know about Lincoln is is contained in those two volumes. So uh, so there, those are incentives for people who uh, who contribute uh, above the this sort of small donor category. Sure, and and obviously the biggest incentive should be really just to help uh, perpetuate what is a great. Uh, interpretive um, addition to the whole um, uh, park and really the, the greater Springfield uh, Lincoln experience as well. Um, right, and we're hopeful that this, this, this addition to the park, which we, have, we trust it will be added to the park, uh, will encourage more people to come to Springfield and, and to visit the Lincoln sites and to give a better idea of, uh, get a better idea of what Lincoln's life was actually like for most of the time he lived at 8th and Jackson Streets. Now, the, what the Park Service has done in preserving the home is, is uh, excellent, to be sure. Uh -huh. um, but uh, this would add uh, an extra dimension to that. And as I said earlier, my, my friend who, who took uh, tourists through the home was so disappointed that, that he had to try to explain that, well, this home really does not represent what the Lincolns actually lived in for most of the time they were here at this site. Right. Uh, and this would, uh, and he he would long uh, for having some site. Well, just go down the street and go into the cottage. Uh, and so here, we're uh, carrying out a vision that's not just mine, but is one that a park service ranger had um, just 20, 30 years ago. Right, right. Well, again, excellent work, Michael. Kudos to you and the entire uh, staff and folks of of the Abraham Lincoln Association for uh, everything they're doing to 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 move this forward and uh, get it going. I don't know if there's any any other thoughts or uh, words of wisdom that you want to offer folks on on this project or encouragement? No, just to say thank you, Josh, for for making this possible. Oh well, thank you. Yeah, just a reminder again to everyone watching or listening. Uh, AbrahamLincolnAssociation.org um, will offer you plenty of information about the ALA, um, but also this project in particular. Um, what 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 we're calling the Lincoln Cottage, um, something of national significance. Uh, uh, certainly, um, as it relates to interpreting Abraham Lincoln, his growth um, and development prior to be, becoming president of the United States. So exciting project and uh, invite everyone to take part and, and join in. Thanks again, Josh. Thank you.